Hey everyone, this is Paul with another SQL Skills Insider demo video. This one goes with the first of the October newsletters. This one's coming to you from a hotel room in Omaha, Nebraska, where we've been on site with a client of ours for a week. So over the last few weeks, I've seen a few people getting confused uh, online about what goes on under the covers when different kind of recovery models are used for minimally logged operations, specifically about the number of log records you might expect to see for a fully logged operation. So I thought I'd do a little demo video to show you some of what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is create a database to play around with, and I'm gonna use the simple recovery model for the first part of the demo so that the operations I do are minimally logged. I'm gonna create a table with fixed size around 1,000 byte rows, doing a, a fixed size char 1,000, and then a clustered index on my int identity column. I'm gonna stick in 10,000 records. This will take uh, three or four seconds. And then I'm gonna do a checkpoint. Now in the simple recovery model, the checkpoint is gonna clear out the transaction log. And all I'm gonna have is a couple of log records for the um, checkpoint being there. Now, I'm gonna do a, an index rebuild, and this is gonna be minimally logged. And what that means is that only the allocation of pages is gonna be logged, not the actual insert of records. So I'll go ahead and do that. Couple of seconds, right. And then let's have a look in the transaction log and see what's there. So plenty of information on my blog. If you go to Google or Bing and just do FNDB log and pull Randall, you'll see all kinds of examples of using FNDB log to look inside the transaction log. So we have 11,000 log records, well, sorry, 13,000 log records. And there's all kinds of stuff going on. Now at the top, what we're gonna see, if we scroll over to alloc unit name, we're gonna see a whole bunch of changes to some of the hidden system tables. And this is creating the metadata for the new index that we're gonna create. Because remember, an index rebuild does creates the new index before it drops the old one. Same thing if you're going from a heap to a clustered index or from a clustered index back to a heap. The new structure is always dropped before the, um, so the old structure is always dropped before the, the new one is released to you to use. So now we start getting into our clustered index that we're building. So let's scroll across and have a look and see what we're seeing here. We are seeing a whole bunch of operations on bitmaps. So we've got the PFS, which is actually a byte map, and we're modifying a row. So if we scroll across for this particular log record, what we'll see is, if we go over to the description, all the way over here, what it's doing is it's allocating an entire extent. And because we're doing a minimally logged operation, it's actually pre-allocating all eight pages in that PFS page. So all eight pages in the extent are being marked as allocated at one go. Now this only happens when you're doing some kind of bulk operation like a bulk load or an index rebuild or an index build. It doesn't happen during usual operations. Usual operations are allocating an extent, which really means reserve that extent for your exclusive use and then allocate and use the pages one at a time. But a bulk operation is gonna allocate all eight pages at once. It's more efficient to do that than having to latch the PFS page eight separate times and generate eight say, separate log records when we know that we're gonna allocate and use a whole bunch of the pages all at once. At the end of the operation, if there's any pages in the last extent that was allocated that are not used, they get marked as deallocated, or not allocated, I should say. So we see our PFS log record is marking all eight pages as allocated. If we scroll across and see the before and after contents, so here's the before contents, and here's the after contents. It doesn't really matter what the before contents are, but the after contents you can see is marking eight pages in a row as allocated. Now the PFS bits, there's uh, eight bits per byte, and the, the PFS signature for a page being marked as allocated is the, um, the hexadecimal OX40. So absolutely eight pages in a row getting allocated there. So if we scroll back across, so we've got all of these modify allocations. We scroll down, let's scroll a bit quicker though. 
So we scroll down, we see the new index getting created. Now there's a bunch of row insertions happening. But if we look at the context, we see that these are being inserted into the interior of the B tree. So it's creating the leaf level and then it's creating the B tree on top of that, rather than inserting all the records individually into the leaf level. If we scroll down again, now what we're seeing, let's go and have a look here. We are seeing a whole bunch of pages being deallocated. So this is the deallocation of the old index. So rather than having to go and log delete uh, of each individual row, it just deallocates the entire page. So it deallocates all the pages and then deallocates the extents. So that's what we're seeing there. And we see a whole bunch of these. So that's for a minimally logged operation. Now let's go and do the same thing, but for a fully logged operation. So I'm going to do a checkpoint, which is going to clear out the log for me. So the log's empty again. But this time I'm going to switch to the full recovery model. So I switch into the full recovery model, do a full backup just to make sure we're really in the full recovery model rather than in the pseudo simple recovery model. Then I'm going to do that same index rebuild again. Takes a few seconds. And then let's have a look and see what's in the log. So we have the same set of information doing the uh, system tables. And then we get down into our actual clustered index. We scroll across and we see that we are, again, doing a bunch of allocations. So if we scroll over, let me see, keep going. We will see that once again, because we are doing a large bulk operation, the allocations of the pages are being done in a minimally logged method. The eight pages from a single extent are being marked allocated all at the same time. And that's no different from a truly minimally logged operation or a fully logged bulk operation. So it does that. And then scrolling down, we're not going to see individual row inserts being done. We're actually seeing full page formats being done. So our row size is roughly a thousand bytes. If we scroll across here, we'll see that the log records for these full page formats are 7,280 bytes. What's being logged in this case is not one insert row per, log ro per, per row in the index. What's being logged is one full page image from byte zero all the way through the header and the seven rows for every seven rows. So instead of doing one log record per row, it's doing one log record per seven rows with the page image, which has the net effect of seven inserts on. That is way more efficient than doing the seven individual inserts. Now, this is the thing that confuses people, because if we bump this up and we did, say, a million row index, right, you wouldn't see a million log records. You'd see roughly a million over seven log records. Now, many people think, well, that's not full logging. Yes, it is. The definition of full logging is not there is a log record for each and every operation that occurs during the large bulk operation. The definition of fully logged is there is enough information just in the transaction log to fully reconstitute the transaction being performed. In this case, even though we're logging, we're logging full page formats rather than individual inserts, that is enough to completely reconstitute that index rebuild operation if a crash occurred. So just to show you that the, the rest of the operation occurs, here's our modifies. If we scroll over, then there's the deallocation of all the old pages happening as well, just like we saw on the true minimally logged operation. So short video, just want to show you that where some of the confusion comes from around fully logged operations. Again, fully logged doesn't mean one log record for every operation. SQL Server can do whatever kind of efficient logging it, it wants to do. It doesn't matter that it's whether it's minimally logged or fully logged. It can kind of squish stuff together, and that's what we were seeing with those format page log records, where it makes more sense to log one log record with the overhead of having to do logging, rather than seven log records with seven log record overheads. So I hope you enjoyed the demo video. Uh, there'll be more coming up in another couple of weeks. And until next time, thanks for watching, and thank you for being a SQL Skills Insider.